this is the tutorial for chapter 2, tutorial 1, drawing tutorial for the flange. So once you have the 3D part file for the flange drawn, then you can go ahead and start making your 2D drawing. To make a 2D drawing, have the flange open in the background, roll over SOLIDWORKS and go to File, Make Drawing from Part. There's several ways to do this, this is just my preferred method. When this pops up, you should see the A size ANSI landscape, A size ANSI portrait. If you don't see that, if you see something that says ISO, uncheck this and then they should appear. Also we're going to want to uncheck display sheet format and then we're going to hit OK. If you have display sheet format checked then you're going to have this display appear in your 2D image and we don't want this, we're going to make our own later. So now we have this white space here and here's all of our views. Now doing at this point you can pick whichever view you want to be your front view so in case you drew your drawing in the wrong plane you could pick something other than the front view to make your front view for the 2D drawing but since we drew our front view in the correct location we'll just drag the front view in and then you'll drag and drop and then move your cursor up click your mouse to place and now you have the front view and the bottom view, uh, front view and top view. The next thing we want to do is we're going to dump in uh, our dimensions so we can go to annotations, model items, entire model, import items into all views and eliminate duplicates. Then all of our dimensions get dumped in. Then we need to start arranging some of these and changing the way that they appear. One of the best things you can do is just move them all out of the way so that you can clearly see all of the dimensions. Okay, so by looking at the picture of the flange on page 77, we can see where we're going to be going the finished drawing is there on 77 so if you would like to reference that quick you can go ahead and do that and pause the video we'll see that the five and a half inch dimension here should be displayed in the top view and also as a linear dimension so I'll right click display options display as linear then I'll hold shift click drag and drop over the top view. The 2.75 should also be in our top view so I'll right click display options display as linear hold shift click drag drop we see that the radius here we don't need that looks like we'll add a note later For that. Um, you see that we have this 0.75 dimension. We'll put that at the top there like that. Move in that two and a half inch. This uh, top view then is, is pretty much done. These center lines, I'll show you how to put these center lines in a little later. Uh, this one, let's do the front view now. One and a half inch dimension. We need to make it a bilateral tolerance and that's how we do that and then we need to change the number of decimal displayed to the thousandths position number here or over here at the half inch diameter we have four holes and we should represent that all four holes are a half inch so if we click on the half inch and roll over that button there click in front of the diameter symbol and type 4 capital X then you'll have 4 X which means 4 times uh, 4 holes the diam half inch diameter we'll have uh, this 4 and a half 4 and a quarter dimension here uh, that should be displayed as a linear dimension so we'll right click on it display options display as linear you'll see that it's crooked we need it to move over here so 
we'll click and drag that circular grip and move it over so that grip that I grabbed was this little ball right there the little circle right there okay um, looks like we need to add a geometric dimensioning and tolerance symbol up here at the top so I'll select the top line of the top view and I will go to geometric tolerance in the annotations tab I'm going to select the flatness symbol and for my tolerance I'm going to put 0 .1, whoops, 0 .010 and I'm going to hit OK and now that's up there I'm going to angle it a little bit you should never have leader lines at a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle so it's always good to have them at like a 30 or a 60 degree angle Next thing we need to do is we need to add a section view. Looks like we might be running out of room, so I'm just going to arrange these so that they're all a little bit closer. Move this over some. Okay, so I'm going to go to View Layout, Section View. I'm going to select the center of our front view. Oh, we got to go over here and change our section view to be horizontal, so I'm going to click that horizontal button. There you go and then hit the green check mark okay now our section view is locked in alignment I can't move it over so what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna right click on it and alignment break alignment and then I can drag it over now if for some reason your section view is upside down you can clip click this flip direction button to make it go the correct direction Okay, and uh, now we need to do a detailed view. So in the view layout tab, I'm going to go to detail view, and I'm going to select for the center of my detail view to be about right there. And we would like the detail view scale to be 2 to 1. So go ahead and select the detailed view. Let's go over to the left side here, use custom scale, and we're going to change that custom scale to 2 to 1 to make it larger. This 0.08 dimension needs to go into the detail view, so I'm going to hold shift, click, drag, and drop. And then we are going to go to annotations, model items, and entire model import items to all view and eliminate duplicates. And that will give us our 45 degree dimension that we needed right there. But it also gave us our radius of 0.25 back that we don't need so we can delete that again and this center line there if that comes up you can delete that we don't need that center line there okay and we'll move this into the middle because it fits good in there then we need to add in our trimetric view so I will go ahead and I will go to my front view and then view layout, standard view, browse, Oops. click on that, nope, didn't want to do that, hit control Z if you did that, um, projected view, there we go, projected view, click on the front view, and then click to place the isometric view, hit your escape button so that you can move it, we'll just drag it down here to the side. Now it's not displaying the way we want it to display, so we'll just select it, go over here to where it says display style, uncheck pick, use parent style, and then we'll change the display style to shaded with edges. And if it has center lines in it, we can get rid of those center lines. We don't need center lines in our isometric view. Okay, it looks like the book wanted us to use a trimetric view. One way we could have put a trimetric view in is if we go over here to the right, click and drag, trimetric. And then again, we could change the display style over here. So yeah, that looks better. Let's use our trimetric. Okay, so um, we have the majority of all of our stuff done 
Um, there's just a little few odds and ends that we have to, to pick up on. One of the things that we need to do is if your section view is not AA, we should change that. If it's like BB, DD, CC, we'll change that. So our section view should be AA. Now you can do that is if you double click on section AA, you can hit delete and then you can make it whatever. Just so for example, I'm going to make mine Z. Z just so you can see how you can change it but I'm but we should all have it AA and the same thing for detail B if you have anything other than detail B then I want you to change that back to detail B if you don't have these center lines in here I need you to put center lines in your top view and your section view how we do that is we go to annotations tab center line auto insert select view click click and hit the check mark so now we have our center lines if you have the tangent edges showing so if you have more lines in your front view top view and section view than I do then what you're going to need to do is go to each drawing right click tangent edge and make tangent edges removed same thing up here right click tangent edge, tangent edges removed, right click, tangent edge, tangent edges removed. Okay. Another thing that we'll need to do for our drawing uh, is we would we'd like to add a note. So we'll go up here to where it says note. And this note is on page this all in caps. The note is on page 69. Make sure you type it all in caps. Okay, so that note when you type it in, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and just just type it in, make sure it's Century Gothic, and we will do Century Gothic 18. Okay, and that note says all dimensions are inches and degrees. Default tolerance for linear dimensions is and we have to add a symbol here so we're going to go over here add symbol plus or minus 0 0.020 default tolerance for angular is 2 and all fillets and rounds are for this what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, link this to our fillet over here so what we're going to have to do oh if you accidentally click somewhere it's going to make a double so hit escape and then click on it again sorry about that um, so what we're going to do is we're we going to link that to right here so well, it should add that radius when you just click on it Oh, you know what? We probably have to have it smart dimension. So we'll just go annotation, smart dimension. Maybe we should have just left that in there. All right. There we go. All right. And then that is the note. And then we can delete that radius of 0.25. This note, we'll put it down here at the bottom. 
Okay. And then one more thing we need to do, if you don't have hidden lines showing, you need to select your front view and go over here to make sure that your hidden lines are visible. Yours might look like this. We want to make sure it looks like this. Um, so if you select your front view, we'll make sure that our hidden lines are visible. Move that drawing over a little bit, space this out a little bit better. Okay, looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, so that is just about it. Let's add the note for our scale. scale is 1 to 2. Okay, so that is the end of tutorial 2.1.